Hello everyone, Alex here. Today we're going to continue with how to create equipment schedules in Revit. In part one, I show you how to create shared parameters and how to add those shared parameters to your equipment and your schedule. In this video, part two, I'm going to show you how to fill out your parameters. In this case, we're using the properties palette because we define them as instance parameters. If you want all your compressors or all your vacuum pumps to look exactly the same and read the same information, most likely you will want some type parameters instead of instance parameters. But the idea is essentially the same. I'm also going to show you how to enhance your remarks field so that the input is a little bit friendlier. So instead of having a single line text, which is kind of annoying, you're going to have a multi-line text so that it's nice and easy. Hi everyone, this is Alex with BIM It Up where we help you with professional training and coaching in mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection systems, and Autodesk platforms like Revit and AutoCAD MEP. Let's get started. And now we can just fill up our information. So let's see, equipment manufacturer is B Camidais. Model number is SAS 10T 200B TCDY. Standard CFM each. Each one's doing 34.8 at a pressure of 50 PSI. The total is two of them at the same time even though it's a triplex. The total compressed air standard CFM is based on a two out of three compressors running. So it's 69.6. .6, and this is at the same pressure because they're in parallel, 50 PSI. Now the electrical information. Our voltage is 480 or 460. The equipment phasing, this is three phases, and it's at 60 Hertz. Now each one of those compressors is 10 horsepower. And the total, even though only two of them are supposed to be running, in case they have to run the three compressors for any emergency, I'm gonna just put the 30 so I own the 30 horsepower. And then does this have to be connected to emergency? Of course it does, so yes. And do we want this connected to our building automated system? Yes. Then as far as remarks, and I notice now that to fill up the equipment remarks field, it's pretty annoying, it's not user friendly. So I'm gonna try to change this text field to a multi-line text field to see if it's a little bit easier at least. So I'm going to go to manage, I'm going to go to share parameters, I'm going to try to edit those share parameters, plumbing. So I'm going to add a new parameter, so it's going to be AJS equipment remarks multi-line. So now instead of just text, I'm going to make it a multi-line text. And I hit OK and OK. Now let's see if I go back to my family and I change this parameter Instead of equipment remarks, let's just remove this guy and let's add another one. That's going to be the multi-line one. So plumbing, equipment remarks, multi-line. It's going to be an instance parameter and I'm going to group it under plumbing. Now I'm going to take it all the way down. I'm going to load into project, override existing version. Yes. And now let's see if I click on it and I go to equipment remarks multi-line. There you go. Now it's a little bit better, right? And now I can type here a little bit easier. Pre-wire, pre-piped, triplex medical air compressor, package system. And now I can hit enter and go to the next line if I wanted to. So provide with 200 gallon receiver. Could have this as a separate column as well. That, actually, I think it would have been nice. I, I might change it in the future. You can provide with four inch concrete housekeeping pad and spring isolators. And then we want the entire system entire packaged system, it shall be listed and NFPA 99 compliant. And you know, many of this could be footnotes, but I don't like depending too much on footnotes because Revit is not too friendly when it comes to schedules and footnotes, and you'll see why in a little bit. So we hit OK, and let's see how our sheet is looking. Well, we're missing a bunch of columns here, so let's go ahead and add those fields. We have the equipment tag, description, manufacturer, model. Now we need the standard CFM for each standard CFM total. We want the electrical horsepower each, the electrical horsepower total. Now we want our voltage facing and Hertz. So we have our voltage facing Hertz. We have our RPM. We want to have this in emergency power and we want to have it connected to the BAS. Hit OK. Now let's go to our sheet. Let's drop that schedule. Oh, but that's a modeling schedule, so let's create a sheet schedule so we put our headers. Now this guy's going to be a sheet schedule, so I need to make it a sheet schedule. Sheet. I'm going to make the other one modeling schedule. Let's go to the sheet. And now let's change our headers so it looks a little nicer. We want this to be our ID. This is going to be our description. This is going to be our manufacturer. 
and it's going to be our model number. Now we have our standard CFM each and our standard CFM total. The same thing for horsepower, horsepower each and horsepower total. Then you want your voltage, you have your phase, you have your hertz, you have your RPM, and you have your emergency power, and your BAS monitoring. They're both set to yes. Now I realize that I'm missing here the RPM, so let's go ahead and add it. So we have to go back to our family. And we want to add, right after phase, we want to add the RPM. I'm not sure if this is a good idea because some of them are going to be in variable frequency drives, but let's just add it. So share parameter, plumbing, equipment RPM, instance, we're going to group it under plumbing, and we move it down right under the facing. Let's click OK, go to project, over existing version, now click on it, and then the RPM, it says 3600. Let's go back to our schedule, all looks good. Let's go to our sheet. So that's our sheet schedule, that looks good. Let's drop it into a sheet. Here they are, schedules, sheet schedule. This one, drag and drop. Could probably do a little formatting here. So, so yeah, let's go ahead and open that schedule. Let's first change the title. We're gonna call this Medical Gas Source Equipment Schedule. Let me close level two. I'm gonna do a Windows split here just to see how this is looking. Actually, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this guy to the to the right. So I'm gonna do TW to untile, and now I'm taking it to my other screen. And you're gonna have to trust me that it looks good. So medical gas source equipment schedule. Let's come in here and let's go to. We're good with filters. So right now I have it as contains medical air compressor, so the medical vacuum pump's not gonna show up. It's a shame that they don't have an OR because I could do that in MVP. I guess we're gonna have to add another parameter, an equipment type or something like that. I think I have it somewhere, but for now this is good. So let's just keep medical air compressor. Then sorting, we're fine. Formatting this a little bit. Uh, how do we want this? We want all these guys. Let me see if I can make them all align to the center. Okay, it's looking a little bit better. Let me bring this so you can see. So we definitely want description in one full line. Medical air compressor is pretty good. We want the word manufacturer to be in the same line. Model is pretty good. Let's try to make it fit, right? Standard CFM for each. We would like to have this looking like that. This looking like that voltage phase, etc. Then emergency power, BAS monitoring. We want to have these two guys here for standard CFM under a different header, main header. So that's, I think, pretty easy to do. So let's see, these two guys, well, I have to go, obviously, to my schedule. So now I come here and here. I think I can group those. There you go. And now we can merge. Oh, this actually already merged. So we can say standard CFM. And then here, instead of having the word itself, I can just delete it and have each and then the total. And now we do the same for the horsepower. So we want those grouped. And this is horsepower. And then this is horsepower. And then this is each. And this is total. Anything else that we have to group? I don't think so. Let's see how this is looking. ID, description, manufacturer, model, standard CFM for each and the total system, HP each and the total system, voltage, phase, hertz, RPM, if we want an emergency power or not, and the BAS monitoring. Oh, we're missing our remarks, so let's go ahead and add that. So here in our schedule, fields, so one of the remarks, the ones that are multi-line. So let's go ahead and add that, okay. And now this got all out of whack, so Let's just stretch that. Maybe something like that's good. That's pretty decent. And now here's the painful part. Rev is pretty annoying that you cannot add a line down here and make it a multi-line. Um, so you have several options. One of them would be to just have M text here and then just group that. I don't like that because then, you know, if I go to my schedule, this schedule doesn't really contain all the information I want, right? I don't want to have that separate. Uh, so the other option is to add a line on the top as a, as a new title, if you will, and then you just make that a multi-text, but then the problem with that is that it stays on the top. I don't like that. I would like to have it at the bottom, right? We, that's that's how we're used to 
do things and it's a little bit annoying that you have to change the formatting just to please Revit. So the middle of the road solution that I'm settling with is I'm going to create another schedule which is going to be a key schedule and I'm going to make it a note block. Thank you.